All right, so the DLC just came out and I had this wild idea to make some Megas for our Kitakami Pokemon. So of course, before we continue, there'll be spoilers. No spoilers for the story, mind you. I have even written the dex entries to be as story avoidant as possible. What I will be spoiling are the partial or full typings of the Pokemon, Ogapon's true face and mask related stuff, as well as the typing of the loyal free and a certain Ursa Luna thing that was introduced. Feel free to come back to this video after you finish the DLC. Okie dokie, if you're feeling monkey dory, let's bask in some pheasantipity. Yeah, that one doesn't work. But if you're staying here, let's take a field trip to Kitakami. Let's begin with our loyal three. We've got our nerd, our jock, and our most beautiful boy in all of Kitakami. But let's begin with the goodest boy, Okidogi. Funnily enough, my design for a quillfish evolution on Quillable was strangely close to some things about Okidogi, and even influenced the mega design a bit. What I wanted to do was give it a more feral design, like what if they were the unloyal three? Ooh, spooky. But Okidogi would become this quadrupedal, fluffier creature, looking maybe a bit more cartoony with big jaws and even only like teeth sticking higher up than the rest. The major thing I wanted to play up on each of the three were the toxic chains and them interacting differently for each of the Pokemon. For Okidogi, it extends outwards into this symbol of power instead, looking much like the face of Okidogi himself. I'd love it if it was like its own entity that would move and make faces itself. It's a bit silly, but I think Okidogi gives off that energy anyway. Like it could pull out a cartoon mallet at any time and give you a big bonk. The tail was also something I wanted to play up to give it this big, thick silhouette. I really love Okidogi's design and I've been wanting a Shiva or a Kida kind of Pokemon with this kind of aesthetic for a long time. Colors stay exactly the same for him as those green and blacks are just striking. Mwah! Okidogi, the retainer Pokemon, a dark and fighting type. A mysterious mega stone found in the land of Kitakami. The stone is unique and has a very strange dark aura to it. The power of Mega Evolution forces Okidogi's bone structure to change, becoming quadrupedal and gaining a feral attitude. Okidogi becomes even more fearsome in battle with large sharp teeth and claws steeped in a powerful toxic poison. Despite the danger, Okidogi has quite the lustrous and fluffy coat, and their massive fluffy tail makes it a favourite in Kitakami, although this can lead to very dangerous medical situations. Mega Okidogi has a new ability called Toxic Claws where physical fighting type attacks have a small chance to poison and increase the damage against poison targets. Apes. Together. Strong. Next we're going to do some monkey magic with Monkey Dory. I love the shape design on Monkey Dory and its whole look and being a bit of a crafty Pokemon, it gave me this idea for an almost Beast Paradox Slowpoke look to it. Its brain is so big now it has unlocked the ability to float like Sheen and Jimmy Neutron, and the chain now broken kind of hovers around its head, and would look so cool just slowly hovering and revolving around that bulbous brain of the monk. The original face was interesting, but I felt that for a Mega, keeping the face rather similar is important. If it was a form or something, I'd have kept the original version, but I really like the thick lines of their face, adds a lot of focus to it. To make it seem like the head is just bursting outwards with big brain energy, I used the skin colour blue to sort of transition into the black fur, also allowing me to change the swells on the head to a darkish purple that wouldn't stick out a bit too much. I also changed the mouth to fit a little more monkey dory. It looks crafty still, but now it's pondering how best to attack you. Mega Monkey Dory, the retainer Pokemon, a dark and psychic type. A mysterious mega stone found in the land of Kitakami, the stone is unique and has a very strange dark aura to it. Upon evolution, Monkey Dory's mind expands, both mentally and physically. The chain around its head now broken and slowly rotating around the circumference. This bolsters Monkey Dory's powers, giving it unlimited psychic potential. It can now float off the ground and is smart enough now that it considers battles in the split second before they start allowing it to see every outcome and decide the best approach to the coming fight. Mega Monkey Dory has a new ability called Neurotoxin, where special psychic type attacks have a chance to poison and increase damage against poison targets. 
Pheasantipity sadly isn't my favourite design, it feels a bit plain compared to the other two, save for the toxic chains which are cool looking. For their Mega however, I wanted to play up a more regal role, giving it a sort of full length kimono shape to the wings, draping all the way down and covering the body while the toxic chains cross the wings as an obi belt and ending in a sort of bow that combines a fan shape with the bow that it'd probably have control over for its attacks. I changed the head a bit to have a more traditional Japanese hairstyle and added in some little yellow parts being almost Kanzashi-esque stand-ins. I ended up changing its stance quite a bit as it felt very unbalanced, but in the end I think this would be an interesting foil to the other two, looking a bit more passive in its stance, but it'd be just as feral and deadly. Mega Pheasantipity, the retainer Pokemon, a dark and fairy type. A mysterious megastone found in the land of Kitakami, the stone is unique and has a very strange dark aura to it. Once Pheasantipity undergoes mega evolution, its wings become like a long outfit, obscuring the rest of its body, and the toxic chains become part of its ephemeral beauty, but also serve a different purpose, working like fans that help spread the mystic fairy energy. It walks through the villages of Kitakami, spreading a strange mist, that anyone who is enveloped by it falls asleep and finds their life force drained. It has become a folklore legend. Pheasantipity in this form has a new ability called Toxic Beauty, where special fairy type attacks have a small chance to poison, and increase the damage against poison targets. Alright, another warning, it's Ogapon time. I'm going to talk about its mask as well as its unmasked face, so keep in mind that as we go in. I love Ogapon. It's quickly becoming one of my favourite Pokemon. It's cute, it's a fun design, and I love Oni's and Yokai aesthetics. And the masks that Ogipon get are stylish, and it knows it. The typing isn't exactly the most exciting, but it don't matter. I needed a new favourite grass type anyway. But let's talk about the Mega. In the Mega, I wanted a from below shot of an unmasked Ogipon kind of leaping in with joy to hit with a kick. The actual main body isn't changed much, except their head spikes are longer and more deadly. What really changes about it is the little head vine that it normally utilizes in the regular form now becomes a four-pronged vine that sticks to each of the masks. So instead of it being able to hold only one, it holds four, and it would have an ability that switches between them all during battle. Maybe the base mask could keep it as a pure grass type. Sadly, I couldn't show all four, so I decided to put the cornerstone mask in the background and have the other two obscured. Also makes it a lot easier for me though. Colouring, I had the two arms, wings, kimono, sleeve, things, have a corner of each of the colours from the forms. I ended up colouring the gems on the teal mask using the same kind of multiple blocks of colours that the official art uses, which really made it look great, and even adding a bit of an outline of energy on the lines helped make this look like a very strong ogre pond bristling with energy. Mega Ogapon, the Mask Pokemon, a grass, rock, water, and fire type. A mysterious mega stone found in the land of Kitakami. The stone is unique and seems to shimmer in many different colors like a wild rainbow. By the power of Mega Evolution, Ogapon doesn't undergo much of a large change, but gains access to powerful tendrils sitting above its head, letting it wield all four of its masks at once, allowing it to switch between them. An incredibly adept physical fighter during battle, Ogapon will launch itself into the fray and unleash relentless kicking attacks, able to leap in and out of battle, all the while switching masks to suit the occasion. Ogapon in this form has an ability called Mask Switch, which changes the mask at the beginning of each turn, changing Ogapon's secondary typing. <laughs> Our next Mega isn't Diplin, because I mean Double Diplin already works like that. No, we're going to be focusing on Freddy Fazbear himself, Blood Moon Ursa Luna. This design is just cold, literally being like the Terminator, it's so scary. And Ursa Luna by itself is actually kind of scary anyway. I thought this Pokemon would be a Steel type, but it isn't, so let's rectify that. My idea was sort of a full body samurai looking Ursa Luna, very similar to the Silver Samurai from Marvel Comics. 
The design kind of plays off what we already have, the two different eyes, one being the night vision eye and the other the red eye. The bumpy bits on the arm gave me a great idea for little bits of accents on the entire body, which also helped give it a bit of variety. I'd say it isn't the most wild idea, but I think it'd be cool to see what it looks like fully covered. For colours, I gave it almost full steely silver colours, with small accents with the eyes and the fur just showing through. This thing would just be a beast with megas. Straight to Ubers for you. In fact, straight to Ubers for every design in this video, I guess. Mega Blood Moon Ursa Luna, the peak Pokemon, a steel and ground type. A mysterious megastone found in the land of Kitakami. The stone is unique and is heavier than usual and has a dull, steely glow. Upon transformation, this form of Ursa Luna is wrapped in iron hard mud completely but has not impeded the unstoppable power of this Pokemon, gaining enough strength to move and attack still. Trying to penetrate the armor of this Pokemon is fruitless, unless you focus the mouth or core of the Pokemon, but even then it simply aids in enraging the Blood Moon Beast further. Entire forests in Kitakami have been bulldozed by this Pokemon's raging assaults. Mega Ursaluna has the ability Sheer Force. Alright, so I know that's all the kind of Kitakami things, but I love Pormot so much, everyone, so I wanted to make a mega for it. This sort of went very anime. A bit of Aldegon from Hunter x Hunter, and a bit of Dragon Ball Z, its hair goes super long and all Super Saiyan-y, and now has the ability to shoot bolts of energy from its palm. It gets even fluffier and has a little neck scarf now. It's sort of even doing Luffy's Gear 4 pose, so I guess that's another weeb reference to add to the list. Not much to really say about this one, but I feel like this would be a great power-up for a Pokemon series who had a poor mod as their traveling companion Pokemon. Mega Pormot, the hands-on Pokemon, an electric and fighting type. A mysterious megastone found in the land of Kitakami, the stone is unique and feels charged with electricity, causing the holder's hair to stand on end. Pormot in this form are incredibly powered with electricity, allowing them to launch bolts of electricity across long distances, and even move like they are teleporting to unleash a supercharged punch. You can tell how charged with electricity Pormod is by their hair. The higher it stands, the more devastating their attacks will be. Touching the hair when it is fully standing will cause a terrible shock that will leave your hair looking the same as Pormod's. Mega Pormod has the ability Motor Drive. This time for sure we're going to meet those baby forms in the star, I promise. But I had to get a video out on these guys because I just really love them and the designs. But what did you think of the designs here? Comment below what you thought as well as your thoughts on the DLC and the Pokemon in them. Just try to avoid spoilers for now. As well as like and subscribe and share it around. Thanks so much for watching. And now for my queen, I shall choose the fairest and most beautiful of the town's females. I'm afraid of commitment. I didn't mean you. <laughs>